The Range Rover was first built by the Rover Company, which had previously focused its attention on the Land Rover series of cars. But in 1951, Gordon Bashford experimented with the design and came up with a Road Rover, two-wheel drive variation of the Land Rover. This idea wasn't worked on until 1966, when Spen King and Gordon Bashford decided to experiment with a new model. Range Rover's first ever prototype was built in late 1967, with the design being finalized in 1968. Following this, 26 Range Rovers were produced and set on the road in the next year. It was named the Vela from the Italian word meaning to cover. This name was used to hide the fact that the company was registering pre-production Range Rovers. One of these models can be seen at the Land Rover Center in West Yorkshire. The Range Rover badge was founded in 1970. After their experiment with the Vela, the company felt well-suited to tackle a new kind of car. Over the years, they've developed four generations. Sub-brands have also been founded off of the Range Rover name. These include the Sport and the Evoque, and more recently, the Vela. Range Rover's first generation of cars was built in the period 1969 to 1996. This was only a two-door car up until 1981, when a four-door version was released. The first generation Range Rover wasn't built as a luxury vehicle. It was more comfortable than current Land Rovers, but compared to other competition, it was fairly primitive in terms of interior comfort. For instance, vinyl seats as well as plastic interiors were the norm, as they were easier to clean with a hose. Later models did show development in this area, with comforts such as power steering, wooden trim, and leather seats being introduced. The first generation Range Rover had a ladder chassis, which was a familiar sight with the Land Rover company. The car was also fitted with coil springs, a permanent four-wheel drive drivetrain, and four-disc brakes. Early models also featured the iconic Rover V8 engines under the hood. This produced a modest 130 horsepower, as the engine was fitted detuned. In 1984, the company decided that it was time for an upgrade. They opted for Lucas fuel injection, giving the car 25 more horsepower. The engine size was then increased to 3.9 litres in 1990 and 4.2 litres in 1992. Another major change that the first Range Rover saw in the 1980s was the addition of a four-door variant. With this also came a diesel variant, thanks to developments within the twin thermofan technology space. It was produced in New South Wales, Australia. The first generation Range Rover became known as the Range Rover Classic towards the end of its production. The first generation was a milestone for the Range Rover name and a turning point for the Land Rover company. The second generation Land Rover was released 25 years after the first generation. Production lasted from 1994 to 2002 and saw some big changes over its predecessor. For instance, Range Rover opted only for a five-door model with all-wheel drive. This was mounted on the LWB chassis and featured two transmissions. Buyers could opt for a manual with five gears or a four-speed automatic. The engine under the hood was an updated version of the Rover V8. Buyers could also go with a diesel version. This featured a 2.5-litre BMW six-cylinder turbo and was the first diesel injection with the electronic controls within a Range Rover. Other distinguishing features include a leather interior supplied by Connolly and the option of satellite navigation. The third generation of Range Rovers was built between 2001 and 2012. The third generation marked a move towards a classier, more top-of-the-range model, thanks to BMW ownership. BMW ownership meant that the third generation was fitted with the same electronics as the BMW 7 Series, which was a great car in its own right. During the end of its production, this electronics system was replaced with the even better system from the BMW 5 Series. From 2001 to 2005, this Range Rover had a 4.4-litre BMW V8, which produced around 400 horsepower. Buyers could only opt for an automatic transmission with the third-generation model. 
In 2006, this engine was replaced by a 4.4-litre Jaguar supercharged engine. This gave the Range Rover yet more power, and the 2006 model became the most powerful model to date by a long way. BMW decided to alter the engine for the third time in 2010. They opted for another supercharged engine, but one which produced more horsepower and torque. This engine stayed with the car until it stopped production in 2012. Diesel variants included a 3.0-litre turbo from 2001 until 2006. This was upgraded to a 3.6-litre V8 turbo in 2006 and finally a 4.4-litre V8 turbo in 2010. The third-generation models saw some big upgrades in terms of user experience and cosmetics. Drivers could now listen to their own playlists with Bluetooth, and the gear lever was replaced for a stylish rotary dial. This Range Rover was also the prettiest. It had side vents, new fascias, side grills, and even side markers. The interior was also updated in 2010. The interior carried on the modern feel with leather seats, an all-new display, and a general feeling of luxury and comfort. The third generation was the turning point in terms of style for Range Rover. The fourth generation became known as the L405 and started production in 2012, finishing in late 2021. It was first revealed at the 2011 Paris Motor Show. This model featured a monocoque unitary body structure made entirely from aluminium. Designed by Jerry McGovern, this helped the car to save over 400 kilograms of weight. Buyers could choose from a five-door mid-size model or an extended model. Both models were extremely spacious and became even more focused on style and comfort. Under the hood, the L405 had a few options. Some were fitted with a 3-litre supercharged V6. The top of the range models came with a 4.4-litre V8 turbo diesel, which packed a punch. Buyers could only buy an automatic model, which came with an 8-speed gearbox. In 2013, Range Rover announced a hybrid version of the L405. This was the first hybrid production by Range Rover, and production started in early 2014. Later in 2018, Range Rover announced a plug-in hybrid variant. On the 26th of October 2021, Jerry McGovern announced the fifth generation of Range Rover. Production is set to commence in 2022 in the Solihull plant in the United Kingdom. The fifth generation looks to top all of the previous generations. Petrol-only models will be available. Buyers will be able to choose from a 3-litre Turbo 16 or a 4.4-litre Turbo 16. There's a clear emphasis on a move towards hybrid technology with the fifth generation. Plug-in hybrids are set to release in early 2022, and you'll even be able to buy an all-electric model in 2024. Electric cars can be a source of controversy among the community, but their need is paramount and, produced correctly, electric cars can outperform petrol models pretty easily. Over the years, Range Rover has also created an expanded line. Some of these sub-brand cars have become the company's most popular, and they are worth mentioning. The first expanded line model was the Range Rover Sport, unveiled at the 2004 North American International Auto Show. It featured stylish exterior styling and a premium interior, and it quickly became one of the company's most attractive models. The Sport was redesigned in 2013. It now features a D7U alloy platform, which allows it to compete with flagship models, thanks to a 400 kilogram weight reduction. It also features extensive equipment, which makes for a stylish, fast, and luxurious user experience. The Evoque was produced in July 2011 and gives the customer many options as to how they want their car. You can purchase a three-door or a five-door body, opt for front-wheel or four-wheel drive, and choose from a two-liter petrol engine or a two-liter diesel engine. You can also opt for a convertible. The last sub-brand model is the Range Rover Vela, named after the company's first model and released in 2017. The Vela is simply beautiful. It has a lot of resemblance to the Jaguar F-Pace and is one of the company's most expensive models. 
So that's everything you need to know about the history of Range Rover. What was once a company that used plastic interiors is now one which uses only the finest quality leather. Diesel models have turned into hybrids and all-electric models, and fashion has taken precedence over function. All in all, Range Rover is an amazing car brand with an interesting history and represents what it means to drive in style. Mm -hmm.